A little while ago, I did a video talking about how to set up your OBS for your very first live stream. In the video, I talked about encoding your stream with H.264, and for the most part, H.264 has been the most consistently used form of encoding for most streamers. But as time goes on here, especially for people using single PC setups, a lot of people are starting to switch to an encoding system called NVENC. What's going on, guys? My name is Max, and welcome back to another Content Creators episode. And in today's episode, I'm going to be telling you what NVENC is and how it actually works. I'm going to be telling you the best settings based on my personal experience and then I'm going to be doing a comparison between H.264 and NVENC using my 2070 Super. Let's get into it. If you're new here and you're wondering what the content creator series is, basically it's a series designed for you guys and my end goal with all of this is to teach you how to create content on multiple platforms. In a video like this, for example, my end goal is to help you maximize not only your in-game performance, but maximize the quality of your stream for your viewers. So for just a brief overview of what NVENC is, what NVIDIA has done is on the 10 series cards or higher, what they've done is they've added a special chip on each graphics card to be able to offload some of the stress from your CPU to this chip so that way you can have not only better game performance but a clearer quality stream. So for you single PC users out there, this should be like Christmas to you, especially if you've been using H.264 this whole time over NVENC because I'm gonna show you the performance differences in game as well as how good your stream is gonna look on a consistent basis. So setting up NVENC is really simple with OBS and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to the settings and you're gonna go into the stream part of those settings. You're gonna ensure that your Twitch or whatever live streaming service you're using is connected to your OBS. The reason why we're here is OBS in their more recent update added a feature so that way we can do this enable bandwidth test and be able to do a mock version of our stream with our current settings to see how the stability is before you go live. So go ahead and make sure this box is checked right now because you're gonna need to be doing some testing as we're going along here, but make sure you uncheck it before you wanna go live for the first time, otherwise you'll be streaming to yourself, which if you want to, fine, go ahead. So just like the last OBS video we did, we're gonna talk about the encoder settings we wanna use. And instead of H.264, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using NVIDIA NVENC H264 new. For the next two boxes, you're gonna leave both of these unchecked, especially the enforced streaming one, because we're gonna be setting our bit rate and our rate of control here in just a second. So when you hit the rate of control drop-down box, there's multiple options and it can be pretty confusing, but the one that we're gonna be using is CBR or constant bit rate control. The reason why we're going to be using this is because it gives you the most consistency trying to keep your bit rate at about what you set it to and that's really what you want and that's really what twitch advises and whatever live stream in your platform you're working with i'm sure is going to advise something similar so that leads us nicely into bit rate and basically what you're looking for with bit rate is to try and keep it somewhere between 5000 and 7000. If you go over 7,000, that's going to overload Twitch and they're going to drop your stream quality down or turn you off. And you don't want that, so don't run the risk. And then also, if you go below 5,000, you're going to run the risk of your stream looking like crap. So definitely don't do that either. So obviously, if your internet upload speed is something terrible like 2 or some crap like that, you're going to have to really play around with this because you're probably not going to be able to run a 5,000 kilobit stream. So you want to make sure to be testing this a lot using the test feature I just talked about to be able to find what the most optimal setting is for you. We're not gonna dive into keyframe intervals, but the main thing you need to understand is zero is auto, and then two is kind of what Twitch recommends, and I found that to be pretty consistent, so I just use two, it doesn't really affect my stream too much. So when we're talking about preset, you've only got two options. You've got max quality or quality, and you wanna try to keep your stream on max quality as much as possible, because that's gonna obviously give you the best quality you can possibly get, but, the main thing is that most games can actually handle you streaming at max quality with your NVENC encoder, so definitely utilize that where you can. But if you are in a game that is very resource intensive, definitely drop it down to quality because that will help get your stream to be more consistent. And yes, you'll see a little bit of a quality drop, but it's not gonna be as bad as you would think. So for the profile, leave it at high. I haven't really noticed a significant difference in performance with this, so just don't worry about it. Just leave it at high and be done with it. So for look ahead and psychovisual tuning, I haven't really noticed much of a performance difference between these two. Truthfully, there's people that are out there that say it does something, so leave it checked, and there's people that say don't leave them checked because it leads to performance issues. I leave them unchecked just because when I visually look at it on my stream, I see zero improvement or difference with my stream quality, so I would rather not run the risk of it affecting my stream in some way, so I just leave them both unchecked personally. So for GPU and max B frames, definitely leave those as zero for GPU and two for max B frames. Pretty simple, cut and dry, no need to really explain what those do. Let's go ahead and head over to the video tab, and for the base canvas resolution, you basically want this to match your display. So if your display is a 1080p monitor, 
make sure that you have it set to 1080p for me it's 1440p and that's where i leave it and for the next one for the output tab that's what you're going to be outputting to twitch so this is where you got to kind of make your own decisions based on what you're playing some games if you drop it down to 900p or even 720 it will help with your performance and your stream quality so definitely be flexible there i typically keep mine at 1080p and sometimes drop it down to 900p where i need to so to keep it simple for the downscale filter there's a ton of different options but i use lasco's 36 sample and that seems to be the most consistent for me personally but there's tons of options so definitely do some research on that on your own and lastly obviously for the fps you want to keep that at 60 frames per second and that's pretty much baseline never change that always keep it at 60 frames all right guys future max here and i just got back from testing all four games i decided to use for the x264 versus nvenc and i'm honestly very surprised as to the result i'm going to show you right now side by side the settings that i use for both nvenc and x264 for this test and the idea is that nvidia says that NVENC is supposed to be able to do x264 medium CPU usage. So that's what we're going to be comparing it to right now. All right, with all that being said, I'm going to show you the footage right now and then we're going to talk about it afterwards.
So if I'm being completely honest, I went into this test completely blind because I wanted to see what would happen because ever since I switched over from my 5700 XT over to my 2070 Super, I haven't run a stream at X264 yet, so I figured why not surprise myself and see what happens. So something that I left out that was pretty important is that the CPU I was using for the X264 encoding is a 3900X, which is a pretty strong CPU, but regardless, the NVENC encoding is and should be better than even that. So the biggest reason why I found this most interesting is look at the numbers. I mean, you can see them on screen right now. There was literally virtually no difference between all the encoding numbers. The biggest difference was obviously the CPU usage. You can clearly see that the CPU usage for X264 was significantly higher than the CPU usage for NVENC. So the reason why that's significant is because when you think about it, when your CPU is at 25% using X264, like you can see on screen right now, the issue is, is that the moment that you start having some of those things that can spike your CPU usage up, you may see some stuttering and some lagging on your stream. So that's something to keep in mind because it definitely could lead to some quality issues or even some issues for you while you're playing. While you can see using the NVENC encoding, your CPU usage doesn't go above 5%, which is pretty astonishing. So that's really the biggest benefit to using NVENC encoding versus X264. So my final thoughts and conclusion are if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and have the option to use the NVENC encoder, definitely use it because the headroom you get from the CPU usage alone is enough to warrant you to use it because you never know what's gonna spike your CPU and this will avoid a lot of stuttering and potential issues with your stream. I really hope you guys found this video interesting and if you learned something new today definitely leave a comment down below letting me know what that was as well as leave a like on the video because it really goes a long way to helping the channel. Also if it isn't apparent definitely come hang out with us on Twitch. We talk about stuff like this all the time on stream and you can come in there and ask me questions about anything content creation related or just hang out while we play a game. But all right guys that's it. Thank you so much and as always we'll see you next time.